Hey everyone, it's Peter from Cambridge Community Television back with another short tutorial. Today we're going to go over something that's not important at all. It's not important in the least. This topic is so unimportant that I already regret covering it. Just kidding, it's important. I don't know why I did that. Today's topic is composition. Composition refers to the arrangement of elements in a frame. Good composition guides the viewer's eyes to what's important. See? I told you this topic was important. So in the next few minutes, we will go over a few compositional guidelines that will help you take your production value to the next level. I had ice cream for lunch. So let's start with the rule of thirds. So if you draw two evenly spaced lines like this, then two like this, You'll divide the frame into nine sections, or three by three. This will create a guide that can greatly help you in your quest for quality composition. You can use this guide to inform your composition in many ways. Let's take a look at this shot here where the subject is in the center of the frame. All you have to do is move it to one of the intersections and you have a much more interesting shot. A lot of times you'll want to place the most important thing in the frame at one of those intersections. A character's eyes should generally fall on the top line. And I would even advise to push their eyes towards one of the intersections with leading room depending on where they're looking. We'll go over leading room a little later in the video, so hang on. You can line up landscape shots so that the horizon is on either the upper third or the lower third. This looks way more interesting than if the horizon is in the middle. When doing a conversation scene, you can place one of the characters on the left looking towards the right, and then in the reverse shot, the character can be on the right looking towards the left. The rule of thirds is a very useful technique and a great one to lean on as you're getting the hang of composition. So that's the rule of thirds. Hooah! As promised, let's now talk about lead room. Lead room is the space between the actor's face and the edge of the frame. If they are looking left, make sure that they are on the upper right point so there's all that lead room in front of them. If they are looking right, they should be on the left third, looking towards the right. This way there will be plenty of leading room, so if they move forward, they'll still comfortably be in the frame. If you were to have your actor look left while they're framed on the left, or right while they're framed on the right, this is called short sighting. Short sighting makes the character seem boxed in or confined. If artistically it makes sense to use short sighting, then go for it. But if you want to keep it simple and clean, make sure that there's lead room in the direction that they're facing. Alright, let's talk about a simple one, headroom. Similar to lead room, headroom is about making sure that the subject's head isn't at the very top of the frame. So there's a little space between their head and the edge of the frame. So let's try moving this thing up a little bit. Much better. But don't leave too much space as this looks strange as well. This won't be the only time I say this, but these concepts can and should be broken. Extreme close-ups cut into the face and are intimate and often great. So the headroom concept need not always apply. But for the most part, it's a great thing to be thinking about. Symmetry is another important thing to be aware of. You don't always have to stick to the rule of thirds to guide your framing. If you see or make symmetry in a location, it is often quite compelling as well. As we're talking about symmetry, why don't we talk about center framing? Center framing, believe it or not, is when you put the subject in the center of the frame, like I am right now. This technique is good for YouTube videos like this one, but it can be a little tough when you're using it for narrative or documentary filmmaking. However, it can be used for whatever you want if the production design really supports that choice. It helps if there's a ton of symmetry so the shot feels artistic. Another cool concept to think about is leading lines. Leading lines draw the eyes towards a subject. Lines direct where the eyes go. So when you're planning a shot, look for lines and then place the subject so that the lines lead to them. Another thing to think about is creating depth. You don't want to shoot directly against a wall. This is boring and flat. Try to look for opportunities to add background and foreground into the shot to make it just that much more depthful. And lastly, break the rules. Wow, Peter's such a cool rebel guy telling me to break all the rules. I'm definitely not the first to say this, but these compositional rules are great to understand and learn. But sometimes you can get an amazing shot just by following your impulses. So learn from them and use them as you see fit, but allow yourself to do something interesting if you get an idea. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope this helped a little bit. Um, if you have any requests for future tutorials or things that you want some help with, please send me an email at peter at cctvcambridge.org or you can also send Ellen, who's in charge of the training department, an email at ellen at cctvcambridge.org. Anyways, thank you so much and I will see you next time.